Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. I was watching some of the student tutorial videos from last week, and I saw that there was an interest in Boolean logic and conditional statements. Kelly had a great Halloween-themed video with some history on George Boole, and I also like Shibaji's video on conditional expressions in Python. So those videos motivated me to do the logical thing and make my own Boolean video. I'm going to introduce you to a nifty tool called the Carnot Map, which is a method for reducing Boolean expressions with several variables. Now, I like to teach concepts by phrasing them around an uh, interesting scenario, and being that it's almost Halloween, I figure I might as well get in costume for this too. Now, imagine that in addition to being a brand new Python enthusiast, I'm also a big shot record producer, and I'm in the middle of organizing the greatest supergroup to ever record an album. We start with Daft Punk at the heart, laying down their powerful beats. Celine Dion will be our diva, wailing away like a banshee. To get some Indian pop power, we've got Indian Idol winner Abhijit Sawant. And finally, to capture the hearts around the world, front man Justin Bieber. I call it Celine Abhijit Punk. You're probably thinking, could there possibly be a worse combination of celebrities to form a supergroup? And the answer is absolutely not. But there's a method to my madness. You see, I picked these celebrities because their initials will make for convenient variable names. Now, as a big shot record producer, it's my job to schedule recording time in the studio for all of these artists. And that's where I run into problems. You see, as big shot celebrities, they have a hard time working with each other. And there's certain combinations of them that, when in the studio together, will make beautiful music. And then other combinations that, if you put them together in a room, a fight's going to break out. So how will I keep track of which is which? Let's make a truth table. To build our truth table, we start with our four variables, A, B, C, and D, which represent our four celebrities. Each of those variables is a Boolean value with a value of true, representing that the celebrity is at the recording studio, and a value of false, representing that they are not at the recording studio. For every combination of A, B, C, and D, we make an entry in our truth table. And so since we have four variables, we'll have 16 entries in the table. And then for every entry, we define a value of true or false for whether or not that combination of A, B, C, and D represents a valid recording session. So to begin, we know that if there's nobody in the studio, we can't successfully record. We also know that several of our celebrities have had successful solo careers. So if we leave them alone in the studio, they'll probably do something good. And we also don't want to leave Justin Bieber around the expensive equipment alone. Now, Celine Dion's a very friendly person, so we can assume that if she's in the studio with anyone else, they'll get along just fine. But a little known fact about Justin Bieber is that he's terrified of techno music, so we want to make sure that he stays away from Daft Punk at all costs. So we'll mark all of those cases where B and D, being the Biebs and Daft Punk are in the studio at the same time, as false. And then finally, we can just assume that everything else represents a safe case. Now let's use our truth table to build some Boolean product expressions that evaluate to the entries that output true. So if we take any of these combinations of A, B, C, and D and run them through the corresponding expression, the output from that expression will be true. And we're going to use these 10 expressions to build some Python functions. In this code, I've built a function called isValidSession which takes our four input variables a, b, c, and d and returns a value of true or false depending on whether or not that combination of a, b, c, and d represents a valid combination of celebrities in our recording studio. And to implement it, I've created a series of if, elif, and elf statements which evaluate each of those 10 Boolean statements that we created from our truth table and each of those 10 statements that should evaluate to true, if they do, will then return true from our isValidSession function. And if we make it all the way through that if elif structure, we'll eventually hit our else statement at the bottom. And in that case, we'll return false because none of our previous Boolean statements uh, caught as true. And to demonstrate this in action, I've created some test code, which prints out for all 16 values of the truth table, the expected output value, as well as the actual output value provided by the is valid session function. You can see we provide inputs ranging all the way from false, 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 down to true, 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 true. And so if I run that code, you can see that sure enough, our expected output 
and our actual output match up for all the cases. Now, we learned from some of the tutorial videos that if you're taking in some Boolean uh, variables and you're going to be returning Boolean variables, doing an L if L if type statement is not the best way to implement that code. So a better way would be to implement it as a large Boolean statement that's just passed as the return value. And that's what I've done here in this second piece of code. I simplified it by taking those 10 different product statements and summing them all together with ORs. So this is a method called a sum of products. And to demonstrate that this produces a similar result, I have the exact same test code that we just saw. And if I run it, you can see sure enough, for all 16 cases, our expected result exactly matches our actual result. Now, this is while this may be better than the if elif uh, version, it's still a really large and ugly chunk of code. So let's see if we can minimize it using Carnot maps. Carnot maps were introduced by an American physicist back in the 1950s as a method for reducing Boolean functions. And he does it by basically taking that truth table and displaying it in a different way where it's easy to pick out groups and patterns of outputs and then determine their dependencies on the input variables. To generate a Carnot map, we start with our truth table and rather than organizing it and displaying it in a linear fashion, we're going to organize it as a 4x4 four four grid. You'll see that every column in this grid is indexed by one of the four possible values of the input variable A and B. So this column here represents all uh, of the outputs that exist when the input variables A and B are both false. This column represents when A is false and B is true. This column represents the state when both A and B are true. And this column represents an input state where A is true and B is false. And we do the same thing over here to index the rows, except we use the variable input variables C and D. And now once we've created this 4x4 four four grid, we populate it with the corresponding output values from our truth table. So for example, let's look at this, uh, this field right here. So this field represents the input A being false and B being true, C being false, and then D being true. So if we go over here to our field, we can see A false, B true, C false, and D true represents a value of false, and that's what we have over here in our Carnot map. There's something interesting you might notice about the ordering of our rows is that between any given row, no more than a single bit at a time changes. So from this, excuse me, this column to this column, the only change is that the variable B has flipped from uh, false to true. This column to this column, the variable A has changed from false to true. And then the change from this column to this column is that the variable B has changed from true to false. And this type of ordering is something that's known as gray codes. To use our new Carnot map, we're gonna search for groupings in the output fields and determine the dependencies that those groupings have on the input fields. And the types of groupings that we're going to look for are squares and rectangles of cell size 2, 4, and 8. And so let me show you an example of what I mean by that. You notice down here along the bottom row we have four true values in a row. So we're going to group those all together. And now let's look at the dependencies that those four outputs have on their relative inputs. So we can see that all four of these true values depend on the value of C being true, and they also depend on the input value of D being false. But you notice if we look at their dependencies on the values of A and B, some of them depend on A being false, some depend on A being true, and others depend on B being false, and others depend on B being true. So for this grouping, there's no dependency between the values depending on A and B, but they're all dependent on C and D. So if we wanted to write a Boolean expression defining their dependency on C and D, we would define it as C and not D, because C is true and D is false. All right, so that'll be one of those groupings we're looking for. And our ultimate goal is to find groupings that will cover and account for all of the true values within our Carnot map. So let's go looking for another grouping. And uh, I do see a few here but I want to take this opportunity to show you another interesting uh, trick with Carnot maps. If you remember with the gray codes along the top, 
you notice that these are built in a specific order uh, with our A and B values being false, 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 true, 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 and true, false. And it shouldn't be too hard to see that if we were to continue on this pattern, the next field over, if there was one, would be false, false. And that's because there is actually one, it's just not drawn there. It's a, just a, another copy, sort of a wrap around of the first field we have over here. And so we can see that if we wrap this around and draw it here, it's very easy to visualize that we have a box of four true values here. So we'll mark this as another grouping. And something to keep in mind is that these two true values over here on the right are exactly the same as these two true values over on the left. So we're accounting for them with this box. And so in this box, if we look at our dependencies, we can see that the variable a is true for some and false for others. So we know it's not dependent on a but it is dependent on B being false for both of these cases. Over here on C and D, we can see that C is false sometimes and true others, so it's not dependent on C, but it is dependent on D being true. And so with our true dependency on D and our false dependency on B, we can define that as a Boolean expression not B and D. So this Boolean expression here, if given any of the four input fields that relate to these uh, output fields will result in true. And then the last one, uh, I'll go ahead and pick it out for you. So we've already accounted for these trues over here by using this little trick on the side. We have two more trues up here and we're going to use the same wrap around trick. So we're going to wrap around this false false row to the bottom. Uh, but I'm just not actually going to, to do it. I'll just, you can just imagine that it, that box wraps around. And if we look at the dependencies, we can clearly see that it's dependent on the variable A being true. It does not depend on B. And that we're dependent on the variable C, uh, or excuse me, we're not dependent on the variable C because it's true down here and false up here. But we are dependent on the variable D being in a false state. And so that'll give us the expression A and not D. So we've now created three Boolean expressions that capture all of the true states that we had within our Carnot map. And if we take those three Boolean expressions and we combine them with ORs, we've now created a single Boolean expression that this whole expression could evaluate any one of our 16 cases from the truth table and will give us the appropriate output case. So let's see that in an actual function. In this final version of the isValidSession function, we take those three minimized expressions that we derive from the Carnot map and we combine them with ORs. And to demonstrate that this produces the exact same value as we expect from a truth table, I'm going to run it against the exact same test code I ran the other two versions of the function. And here you can see, sure enough, the actual output and the expected ma output match case for case. To give you a little more appreciation for the value of Carnot maps, I want to show you a side by side of our original sum of products function and then the minimized version. So in the original we had 10 different AND statements each with four variables and through the Carnot map method we were able to reduce that down into three AND statements each with only two variables. I think that's pretty cool. Now that we've reduced that expression I can build a mean lean little Python program to schedule some celebrities. Ah back to normal. Now you might be wondering, is it really worth taking all that time to make a Carnot map for all the Boolean expressions in my program? The answer is not really. Now we did make the code smaller, which is good for readability, but the efficiency gains that came out of reducing that Boolean expression are really going to be negligible in the types of Python programs we're writing. Where Carnot maps really come into play is in digital logic design for implementation in hardware. In those applications, every single AND or NOT that's in that Boolean expression represents a physical logic gate that has to be implemented in the circuit. So you can see, reducing that Boolean expression significantly can reduce the size of the circuit you have to build. If you found this video interesting, I highly recommend picking up a book or taking a course in digital logic design, because you use Carnot maps a lot more in there. And if you watched this video and you thought, I want to have nothing to do with digital logic, I'll stick to Python for now. Well, to you, I just say thanks for watching and happy programming.